Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. Have you ever noticed that town centers seem to be a surprisingly difficult building to place? Some maps with a lot of elevation change, like Mountain Pass, make it especially tricky to place your town center in exactly the areas you want. Even on Arabia, with hills around your starting location, it can be hard to get your second or third town center right up against multiple resources. Now you may have thought this is because the town center is quite large, but it turns out equally sized or even larger buildings like castles and wonders are in fact much more flexible about where they can be placed. In this video, we'll look into why town centers specifically are so difficult, and generally how the game decides where buildings are allowed and where they aren't. To start with the first question, town centers are especially difficult simply because they allow for no elevation change whatsoever underneath of them. Even the smallest bump under any part of the foundation will prevent you from placing it there. As we'll see, this is quite rare, and the only other building I can find with the same property is the Trade Workshop. Since that's a building that was abandoned during the game's early development, it suggested to me that at one point, maybe every building required being placed on completely flat ground. Checking out the alpha version of Age of Kings, that seems to be the case, and here any elevation change prevents a building from being placed. At some point though, they obviously decided that would greatly limit the number of hills you could have on the map, and as it stands now, there's in fact three different categories for how much leeway buildings can have in regards to elevation. Category 1 applies only to town centers and trade workshops, where the ground has to be perfectly level. The second is an unrestricted category, which applies to farms, houses, gates, towers, and walls. In their case, the game doesn't even check for elevation at all with those buildings, and you couldn't create an elevation change to prevent them from being placed, even if you wanted to. The final class of building is the most interesting, and applies to basically everything else. Castles, barracks, etc. seem to have a little bit of forgiveness, but within limit. Now, I've never seen an explanation of why this is, and even the advanced genie editor gives only a vague hint at what's going on, so we'll have to deduce it from various examples. We'll need quite a bit of space for this, so let's head out to the desert and test it out. Here, we have a lot of different types of hills and cases to experiment with. To explain a bit about how elevation works, you may know from the scenario editor there are seven possible elevations in AoE2, and the corners of every tile rest at one of those seven levels, with an elevation of one being the lowest. With the grid turned on here, it's very easy to see that the corners of every tile are strictly locked to one of those seven levels. Another restriction is the elevation difference between one corner and the next on a given tile can only change by one, so you can't actually create sheer cliff walls through elevation, and need to rely on the optical effect created by the in-game cliffs. Jumping back to placing buildings though, the first thing we notice is that 2x2 tile buildings like the mill or lumber camp are always placeable on any elevation change. Behind the scenes though, mills have the same restriction set as larger buildings, so we have to be able to account for that when figuring out the rule. Instead, it's when we start getting into 3x3 buildings, especially on longer slopes, that we run into problems with being able to place them down. Heading into it, I assume the pattern would be pretty easy to spot, but playing around with it here, it almost seems random. There's lots of locations where it won't allow a barracks, but moving one tile away, sometimes toward even more rugged looking terrain, it would suddenly be okay with it. Based on the genie editor description though, I knew it had something to do with allowing only one tile of elevation difference. Naively, I assume the mechanism would be pretty simple, and just check all of the tiles under the building that you're trying to place, and see what elevation they all are. I figured as long as all of them were the same or within one of each other, then the game would allow it. And while that seemed intuitive, it's pretty easy to prove that's not how it works. In fact, here you can see I have elevation 1, and right up to 4, 5, elevation 6, all under the same building, and again, I can place it here. So far, this hasn't really cracked what's going on, but I found a critical set of observations to working this out, all based on this one hill. First, notice that on the sides of the hill I can't place a 3x3 barracks. Something about the slope of all three tiles clearly make this an invalid location, and that's true on both sides of the hill. Curiously though, notice it has no problem with it if I place the barracks on the southern ridge. That's odd because it seems the back right and left sides are still experiencing the full slope, and yet the game is fine with it, even if I move it slightly to the left or right. Even more curious, that doesn't happen on the north side, which means something about what it's checking makes these situations different in the eyes of the game. Of course, our everyday intuition about geometry says these are the same situation, just looked at from a different direction. A second key observation is that there's a very specific sweet spot on the west and east ridges. Here I can seemingly make the building almost float in midair at this one spot, but if I move the barracks in any direction by one tile, it won't allow it. What's more, this spot doesn't exist for buildings larger than 3x3, so whatever the explanation, it needs to account for why this one spot is incredibly special for that specific size of building. The third and final example we need to work this out is notice at the bottom here, it's fine with me placing the barracks right up against the base of the hill. 
Notice it's okay if I go in by either one or even two tiles of the slope. Again, this seems hard to reconcile with only being allowed one elevation change. Again, adding another wrinkle when coming from the top, I can overhang by one tile, but not two. So again, there's something asymmetrical happening with how it handles these seemingly comparable situations. Now, to be honest, this was quite a tricky thing to figure out, and I used various models and tons of examples to work out why some locations were okay and others weren't. I think I've cracked it though, and really there's only one way I could find that explains all three of these observations. So here's how I think it works. When placing a building, the game looks at all of the tiles below it and focuses on the southernmost V shape of tiles. The rest are completely thrown out and the game doesn't even consider them. You can have an 8x8 cathedral at the base of a hill and as long as the closest V shape of tiles is on the same elevation, the game is completely fine with it. That happens to also explain why the north side of hills is so much harder to place buildings on. It doesn't matter if most of what's under the building is flat, if the closest edges are on a hill, then it won't allow it. When placed on the southern ridge though, notice the closest edges are actually all on the same elevation, so the game is convinced it's actually on flat ground. Likewise, when placed in the middle of a large slope, at least one of the sides will have too much of an elevation change, unless you have a 2x2 two two building. But then we have the observation that you can overlap a hill at the bottom by 2, but can only overhang the top by 1. What I suspect is happening there reflects how the game thinks about the elevation of a tile. Remember, a tile has four corners that are all locked to one of the seven possible elevations. To figure out the height of a tile, the game checks all four corners and considers the whole tile to be at the height of the smallest number. For all three of these tiles, I've highlighted the elevation of all of the corners, but in the game's eyes, all of the tiles themselves have an elevation of one, since that's the smallest number they touch. For a practical example of how this works, here's our barracks at the base of the hill. Now we move it slightly closer, and just looking at the important V shape of tiles, one of them now slides from an elevation of 1 to 2. In figuring out the height of the tiles, it uses the lowest number, and treats this as still being on flat ground. I know this is the case because we can go one more tile up the hill. Looking at the foundation, we have a tile that goes from elevation 2 to 3, which in this case is rounded down to 2. The game then checks the tiles along the edges of each side of the V independently to see if either changes in elevation by more than 1. As long as the change along both sides is equal to 0 or 1, then the building is allowed. But obviously, if we try to go one more up the hill, then even after rounding down, we have an elevation change of 2. So in this case, that's not allowed. This also happens to explain why things are different at the top of the hill. The building here is fine because it's all at elevation 7. If I do a similar accounting of the tiles, you'll notice that if we're overhanging by 1, that still works. But we can't overhang by 2, again, because it's rounding down. In this case, along the southwest side, we have a drop from elevation 7 to a tile that it's considering at elevation 5, which is more than 1, so we can't place the building here. Assuming you're still with me, this is all well and good, and seems to work so far in this and other examples, but now it's time for the true test. Can it explain that magic sweet spot on the east and west sides of the hill, and why that one location worked while all the others around it didn't? Here I have a little map of my rough work and found that along either side of the V, it didn't change an elevation by more than one. Along the southwest side, it went from an elevation of four to three, and along the southeast side, it went from three to two. Since neither side independently dropped by more than one elevation, then the building is completely fine here, as strange as it looks. That said, if we move the building in any direction by one tile, either the southwest or southeast row has an elevation change of two, and this is what convinced me I finally had it figured out. Now to be fair, I doubt it's programmed explicitly like this, but it's just an interaction between its rule of allowing for one elevation change and how it's counting the height of slanted tiles. Either way, I've yet to find a counterexample or an example I can't explain with these rules. It all seems to be the same logic for 4x4 buildings and beyond, and if you sketch out the tiles below and round them down to the lowest elevation of any of their sides, then it always works in the same way. This automatically makes them harder to place, and again there's no sweet spot on the east and west slopes like with 3v3, simply because now you need to make sure you have 4 tiles in a row that don't have an elevation change of more than 1, which is just harder to find. One last observation with the cathedral also shows it doesn't just look at the corners, but follows along the entire side to see if any two tiles along it differ by at least two. So what are the implications of this? First, as we've seen, it means buildings are easier to place on the south side of hills rather than the north face. Second, it means even if a terrain looks pretty rugged, you can often still find a place that works, as long as there's at least one V-shape in the terrain that isn't too bad. That's actually more likely to happen in rugged areas than on smooth slopes, which can be the most difficult to place buildings on. Going back to town centers though, remember they don't allow for any hills whatsoever. 
That knowledge doesn't really help with placing them, but is at least hopefully some consolation that if you thought they were extra annoying to put down, that's not in your mind. Of course, in the scenario editor, we can use Control G to remove all limitations around placing buildings, which leads to some very strange looking town centers, given the town center is made up of multiple parts that each settle on their own elevation level. To answer the original question, the reason town centers are so hard to place is probably cosmetic, and it was likely too tricky to make the different pieces fit together in a way that still looked good. Much easier to just avoid that problem and say town centers have to be placed on flat ground. So that's the surprisingly complicated red tape behind building permits in Age of Empires 2 and why buildings are allowed in some places but not others. Shout out to Brian, Jan, Seb, Jean-Paul, Jockster, Kyle, James, John, Samantha, Woodruff, Justin, and everyone else on Patreon. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.